Yo, what up guys? I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Brothers channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about what makes a basketball shoe good, right? So what is needed in a basketball shoe for it to be a good performer, right? And of course, I wanna preface this by saying this is just my opinion in what makes a ball shoe good. I mean, obviously everyone has their own preference, right? Like for example, I like to have a very light and minimal shoe, but for someone else, they, that might not be that important. You know what I'm saying? So of course it is in the taste of like everyone. So I just wanted to get that out of the way, but uh, shout out to Ryan, Rayan. Sorry, I don't really know how to pronounce your name, but he said he is an upcoming sneaker designer and he watches my videos and uh, wants to see what makes a good performance basketball shoe. Uh, but you know, he didn't really know what to like do with his designs, right? So I just want to like help him out. And also I, I thought it would be a pretty cool video idea. So uh, I guess let's go over every single category in what makes a basketball shoe good. And obviously we got to start with the tractiones, right? So traction, I feel like the design, like the traction pattern isn't all too important. What's more important, I feel like in my opinion, and like just from my experience is the rubber compound. Like I've seen weird outsole patterns, right? But then they're just so damn good because of the rubber compound. And I've seen like really nice herringbone, aggressive herringbone traction patterns that don't have good grip, right? So because of that, I feel like the rubber compound is way more important. And if you're a sneaker designer, that doesn't really matter then, obviously, right? So there's the outsole, uh, moving on to the heel to toe transition, right? So um, he, this is something that's pretty damn important to me. So when I'm running down the court, I don't like to feel my shoe, like feel like a boot. You know what I'm saying? I don't like boot like shoes. Like for example, the Jordan 12, super clunky, very boot like. Also another shoe that's very boot-like is the next levels or the Harden Volume 5s, right? So there's two things you can do to make the heel to toe transition uh, smooth here in the heel, right? So first of all, don't cage up the cushion, right? Leave the midsole exposed so that the uh, midsole can compress when you're kind of like striking your heel, when you're doing heel dominant strides running down the court. That's one way you can make it pretty smooth here in the heel. Also another way is don't make it flat make it a curved shape so that you have this nice rocking motion here in the heel, also a nice curved shape here in the forefoot, right? So for example, here in the next level, it's a pretty flat shape. So you don't really get a whole lot of like rocking motion here in the forefoot, as opposed to like a lot of Nike sneakers, especially like the LeBrons, uh, we have a lot and a lot of curve, which personally I like a lot better than this flat style and uh, adidas does a lot of flat outsoles for some reason you know and just i don't really like that all too much i like uh, a lot of curve shape but obviously that's preference uh I, I know a lot of people that don't mind this either also another thing that makes it very smooth is having a lot of forefoot flex you know and uh, the next levels actually have a lot of forefoot flex so so having a lot of forefoot flex nice curve shape here in the forefoot and here in the heel and having a an exposed midsole all help with heel to toe transition. All right, moving on to the cushioning setup. Uh, cushioning setup, I'm not really gonna talk about too much because that's all preference to be honest. I feel like what I hear a lot though from people, like my friends and stuff like that, as far as feedback goes, is that they like to have a low to the ground cushioning setup. And also something that like is soft, you know? So when you land, it doesn't hurt your feet. And that's pretty much it, you know? Uh, so, I mean, as far as like bounce goes and compression and all that, that's all preference. So I guess the end result for your shoe, like when you're designing it would be like, if you want something that's made for someone that, you know, is very fast. So obviously someone fast would want something a little bit more responsive and not too soft. Uh, if someone jumps a lot, and lands very, very hard, you want something that has a little bit more impact protection. So that's really all preference in the cushion. So uh, there's a cushioning setup there. Moving on to the materials. So obviously this is my preference and materials aren't super important to me as far as like the quality goes, right? So what I want in a basketball shoe is a thin material, something that's comfortable and something that conforms to your foot very well. And I guess something uh, supportive as well, like a, a material that doesn't stretch all too much. And that's pretty much it. So I like both the next level material and the precision five material, right? So the next level material, the quality seems a lot better. So the next level material, the quality is way better than the precision five, but I like both of them on foot. You know what I'm saying? So not a huge deal there, but obviously if you're designing a shoe, uh, try to make it like minimal, you know, try to make it thin and not too bulky as far as the materials go. Also, another preference of mine is I like to have a pretty well padded tongue. And then for the ankle area, that doesn't really matter all too much. I just want 
like a nice well padded Achilles pillow or pad or whatever, you know? So for me, material isn't super important as, as long as those criteria are met. So, um, but you know, obviously, like I said, that's all preference. I know people that really want or like a knit material as opposed to like, I don't know, a mesh or something like that, which it's not super important to me. Moving on to the fit, the fit obviously is very subjective as well. Uh, I know people like I, I have like two or three friends where they go like up a full size to a full size and a half because they like a very roomy fit in their toe box. And I'm like, what the hell, right? And uh, also another one that has a very wide foot. So they're just psychopaths, I don't know. But for me, in my ball shoes, I like a very snug fit. Like my toe pretty much going right to the ed edge of the shoe. I like a very snug toe box area. And also width wise, maybe like a little snug as well. But of course, you can't really cater like a fit towards like every single person because everyone has a different size foot first of all and also everyone has a different preference you know so there's a fit there there's not really a whole lot you can do with fit but one thing that's super important to me that probably isn't super important to a lot of people is how easy is a damn shoe to put on right so for the next levels i hate putting the shoe on because it's so damn hard and i don't like this laceless design uh, I like what companies have been doing. You know, a lot of shoes nowadays, especially ball shoes, have this high heel tab, which pretty much acts like a shoehorn and makes the shoe really easy to put on. So I really like that. So if you can design something where it's easy to put on, then there's that, you know? So for support and lockdown, super easy. So obviously when you're playing basketball, you're doing a lot of lateral movements, especially if you're doing crossovers, step backs, uh, cuts and stuff like that. You're very shifty. You're doing a lot of lateral movements. So you need good lateral support with your ball shoes, right? So all you really need is something here in the forefoot and something here in the heel. And the heel is pretty much covered because every shoe pretty much has an internal TPU heel counter of some sort, right? So the heel, you're fine. Uh, but here in the forefoot or even here in the midfoot, I would suggest going more here in the forefoot. All you need is a lateral counter, right? So the foam coming up or maybe a little plastic piece, you know, whatever it is, you just need something acting as a sidewall and that's pretty that you're good with that you know and then for lateral stability all you really need also is an outrigger so a nice wide flat base and uh you're good to go you know uh i would suggest not going like like some shoes that are pretty bad with that are the why not 0.4 and the lebron 18. so those are pretty narrow and you're high up off the ground and there's really no outrigger so the lateral stability is not the best and obviously ankle injuries are very common in basketball so when you're designing a basketball shoe you want to make a shoe where you want to reduce the risk of that as much as possible like as much as you can so so there's that of course weight i mean i mean i feel like everyone wants light shoe you know what i'm saying and weight isn't super important you know like as far as you know if a shoe feels very responsive like it has good traction very good support and very good fit uh the shoe can feel very responsive and good you know so it's not a huge deal for me but if it's a light and minimal feeling shoe uh, makes me like the shoe a little bit more than like a shoe that's a little bit heavier you know what i'm saying so there's things you can do you know like reduce the outsole don't use a lot of rubber in the shoe rubber and the midsole like the foam compound uh, usually take up a lot of the weight in the shoe so uh, try to reduce as much as you can with that and also look at like whatever compound you're using right so for example boost is a very high density foam pretty damn heavy nike has lunar lime or even react and those are very very light feeling foams so uh i guess that's also something you can look into as far as trying to reduce the weight and also try not to use a whole lot of foam and a whole lot of like plastic and a whole lot of like fuse in your shoe to increase the weight you know just try to keep it as simple as possible obviously aesthetics i mean if you make a good looking shoe that's dope but uh, that's all subjective first of all and second uh there's a million designs that you can come up with the sky is the limit as far as how many unique designs you can do for a shoe so uh, that's that's something that doesn't really matter for performance and also ventilation ventilation isn't super important for me personally but i don't like it if a shoe is super hot you know what i'm saying as long as it's like pretty good ventilation i'm okay with it and ventilation there's two things you can do either put a lot of ventilation holes so you have a lot of airflow through the material or make the material super thin so that it doesn't uh, trap in a lot of heat or you can do both and make the shoe very well ventilated <laughs> you know what i'm saying so uh ventilation pretty easy to do um but yeah that's pretty much it for what makes a sh uh, basketball shoe good in my opinion so tell us what your uh opinion is in what makes a shoe good for basketball there's probably a lot of different combinations of things that everyone prefers so uh tell us down in the comment section below but that about wraps it up thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one